Speaking about people saying stupid things, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, what people are saying about inflation. Some of the stupid things on television anyway are being said by Steve Leisman, who is the senior uh, econ- economic reporter at CNBC. And he was on television yesterday basically saying that he thought the problem in the U.S. economy is that consumers don't have enough debt. Unbelievable. He thinks that what we need is more consumer debt, that Americans need to borrow more money to buy stuff. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Although I guess it's believable coming from Steve Leisman. So if you consider the store source of that ridiculous statement, I, I guess you could believe anything. But have a listen for yourself, because I don't want you to think I'm, I'm making this stuff up. Right. So here it is in Steve Leisman's own words. This is yesterday from CNBC. Here's cut number one. I think the problem in this economy is we don't have enough debt. Don't have enough we debt. We don't oh, have my enough debt. Oh, is that that- your solution? If this economy were healthy, debt levels would be substantially higher because consumers felt the confidence in their jobs and in their future ability to earn to take on more debt. And I present as evidence number one. What is my first oh, chart there, guys? Bring evidence. Take a look what at this, this chart Matlock? right here. Why should our debt levels be back to levels that we haven't seen since, I don't know, 1980? The reason 1980? why is because it's unsustainable. <laughs> okay, so he, he's basically saying, well, if the economy were healthy, we'd have a lot more debt. But what does that have to do with it? Because the economy is not healthy. And one of the reasons it's not healthy is because they took on too much debt during the supposed good times. See, he's going back to the bubble and saying, look, we had all this debt back then. Yeah, that was part of the problem. Consumers had too much debt, and that's why we're in this mess. And the solution is to get rid of the debt, which hasn't happened yet. And of course, as I point out, you know, even in my book, How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes, consumer debt is the worst kind of debt because it hurts the economy. The kind of debt that's helpful to the economy is business debt. And that's business debt for capital investment. If you borrow money to build a factory, you borrow money uh, for machinery, for tools that make your workers more productive, that kind of debt helps the economy because it's self-liquidating. If I invest in a piece of equipment that makes me or my workers more productive and enables me to earn a higher profit, I can use the increased profits to pay off the debt. And society is better off because the debt, the savings were put to a good productive use. But if somebody borrows to consume, nothing is created. No new productive capacity is brought into existence. Consumer loans don't increase capital. They don't increase production. All they do is layer debt on the consumer. And if you borrow money to consume, you don't have an asset to generate an income to help you pay off the debt, both the interest and the principal. So if you borrow money to consume, how are you going to pay back your debt? You have to consume less in the future. So when you borrow to consume today, that means you have to consume even less. So debt finance consumption actually undermines future consumption and retards economic growth, especially because you are using money. Because if somebody borrows money and consumes, Well, that means that money is not available for a business to borrow and invest. So consumer debt comes at the expense of business debt. You you take good debt and turn it into bad debt. So that's number one. But he's saying the problem is we don't have enough debt. We are loaded up with debt. Credit card debt, student loans, auto loans, mortgages. We are drowning in debt. How are we supposed to get more? That's like, you know, Steve Leesman sees a guy in a pool of water and he's drowning. And what's Steve Leesman's solution? We need to pour more water in the pool. He needs more water in there, you know, as if that's going to help him from drowning. It's just going to quicken the process. No, we need to drain the pool. We need to get rid of the water, you know, so the guy doesn't drown. Not, uh, you know, turn on the faucets, which is what Steve Leesman wants to do. But you know what, Believe His asinine comment gets even worse. Have a listen to this. Cut number two. Debt, Obviously, debt is always Lynette. pointed out as a negative thing. I agree. In I'm going to agree with debt you Debt is here. the great bridge between working hard and playing hard in this country. This country has been built on consumer debt. We innovated on it. It's not a negative thing. Too much okay. of it's a negative thing. Too much of it in the wrong place is a bad thing. But overall, debt levels I'm are gonna, very low and a sign of terrible confidence in the economy. I'm going to agree. 
<laughs> oh my God! First, first, debt is a bridge between working hard and playing hard. What does that even mean? Uh, between working hard and playing hard, it's a bridge that allows you to live beyond your means for a while until ultimately uh, there's a crisis. But to say that America was built on consumer debt, no, America was built long before the concept of consumer debt even came along. America was destroyed with consumer debt. It was built with savings. It was built on production. You know, way back when, before you had credit cards, you know how consumers bought stuff? Uh, they, they had layaway. That was the old time concept. Layaway, right? What did you, what did that mean? You mean you went to a store, right? And let's say you didn't have enough money to buy something, but you wanted it. And you wanted to make sure that the store didn't sell it to somebody else. What would they do? They would put the item on layaway. Nobody does this anymore. What was layaway? So they would take the item. Uh, let's say it was $50. And you said, okay, I'm going to pay $5 a month for 10 months or whatever. And so every month you would send a check for $5 into the store. And um, when you had enough money, then you got the item. But that wasn't credit. You were paying as you went. Consumer credit is a new invention. It wasn't around in the 1900, I mean, the 18th century, 19th century, rather, in the 1800s. There's no consumer credit going on there. Consumers bought things out of their savings. They saved up for things that they wanted, and then they bought them. That's what built America. Frugality, prudence, hard work, production, savings, innovation, free markets, sound money. Consumer credit was the cancer in the American economy. That's why we're in so much trouble. And what is Steve Leesman's solution? He wants more. Now, yes, when people are overconfident today, might they borrow more money? Like borrow more money to buy houses they can't afford? Yeah, they did that. And that was a mistake. Now he's saying, hey, consumers are pessimistic, but they should be borrowing money anyway. Why? The smart thing to do, if you're worried about the future, and maybe you have good reason to be worried, and maybe you think you might lose your job, why should you go out and borrow money? You should be paying off your debts. You should be creating a cushion. You know, what about saving for a rainy day? Here you got Steve Leesman saying, no, 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 go out and borrow for a rainy day. All right, but then what if it rains? What am I going to do? I'm already loaded up with debt. You can't borrow for a rainy day because then you're going to get soaked. This, this is asinine. This is the senior economics reporter at... CNBC, imagine, imagine how dumb the junior reporters must be if this is the cream of the crop. Here's one other, uh, one other comment, although in here he actually says one thing that's right, which I guess proves the old saying that even a blind a squirrel can find a nut because he found one. Uh, but, of course, that is surrounded by a bunch of stupid things that he also said. So <laughs> let's uh, listen to this next cut, number three. Student loans are, is a separate is a separate entity in the sense that I believe the money the government puts into student loans actually jacks up student loan st student tuition costs. So I think that's a big part of it. We have to be careful there. I agree. But I believe it has unwound, and that's really the story. The deleveraging by the consumer has been going on essentially since 2007, 2008. We are now at the bottom of the credit cycle, and where will we go from here? Increasingly, hopefully, in a prudent way, is up that consumers feel healthy enough, confident to take on a bit more debt. Very quickly, bottom line. So he thinks that consumers should prudently borrow more money. I mean, doesn't he, those words shouldn't even be in the same sentence. Prudently take on more debt to consume. In, 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 and ideally, nobody would borrow to consume. That's foolish. That's a waste of scarce resources. You buy things when you can afford them. You save your money and then you buy things or you buy things out of your income, out of your paycheck. He's saying that it's prudent for people who can't afford things to go charge it on a credit card or take out a home equity loan and go buy stuff. How is that prudence? By what definition is that prudent? And for him to be here talking about the fact that we've all deleveraged and we've unwound the debt. No, we haven't. Talking about student loans, we got $1.2 trillion. Students are drowning in debt. How are they supposed to take on more consumer loans? And of course, yes, he did acknowledge the fact that government money, government subsidies, is what's driving tuitions higher. Yes, he did acknowledge that. Amazingly enough, he got that thing right. But then he gets everything else wrong. And he thinks students should just take on more debt. He thinks their parents should take on more debt. In fact, what about the fact that hardly any Americans have anything saved up for retirement? 
right? You've got half of Americans have, what, less than $10,000 saved for retirement? That's nothing. Now, they need to save. But what Steve Leesman is saying is even though Americans have nothing saved for retirement, even people who are 50, they've got nothing put away for their retirement. Instead of trying to save for retirement, they should borrow more money, right? They should undermine their financial position even more. They should reduce their net worth by increasing their consumer debt. And that somehow is going to be good for the economy? Of course not. Debt's terrible for the economy. And not only do consumers have debt, their own debt to worry about, what about the national debt? that the government has taken on in their name. Think about all the higher taxes that consumers will have to pay in the future to pay off all the debt the government is borrowing today. There is massive debt. We are overloaded with debt. And and Steve Leisman looks at the situation. We've got all these problems in the U.S. economy. Yet the one thing that he's worried about is that we don't have enough debt. When, of course, a lot of the problems we have are the result of too much debt. And, of course, why do we have so much debt? Because of the government, because of the policies that encourage it, and particularly at the Federal Reserve with its 0% interest rates, uh, subsidizing people going into debt and punishing people for doing the real prudent thing, which is saving. I have a call uh, from Mike in New York City. He had a comment about uh, Mr. Leesman. Mike, you're up. Yeah, thanks. Good morning. No, I was just uh, curious if if Steve Leisman thinks that uh, debt is so great, why doesn't he just quit his job, apply for as many credit cards and loans as possible, and just live off of that? Then he will totally uh, maximize his amount of debt. Well, no, he could he could get more debt if he doesn't quit his job because you can borrow more money if you have a job than if you're unemployed. But your point could still be one t- well taken. I wonder how much consumer debt um, Steve Leisman has. See, I don't have any consumer debt, none. Right? I I and I you know that might be a comment if anybody wants to call in. Do you have consumer debt? What's your no, feeling about consumer debt? Yeah, I mean, I think it's wrong. I mean, I think if you want to buy a car, you shouldn't take out an auto loan. You should buy the car you can afford. If you got five grand, you don't use it as a down payment on a $30,000 car. You buy a used car for $5,000. That's what you should do. You shouldn't buy a $30,000 car when you only have $5,000. You want a $30,000 car, save $30,000 and then go buy it. You know, if you can't save that money, that means you really can't afford that car. You know, don't go into the shopping center. Don't buy clothes. Don't buy furniture if you can't afford it. Don't buy new stuff. I mean, how much how many outfits do you need? I mean, realistically, right? How many how many pairs of pants? How many shirts? I mean, if you if you rotate your wardrobe every week, you can get by with seven shirts. You know, you don't even need seven pairs of pants. You know, you you know, yeah, it's nice to have a bigger wardrobe when you can afford it if you got the money. But if you don't have money, don't go out and buy clothes, especially since, you know, clothes, go buy used clothes. You know, if you don't have a lot of money, just buy used clothes. You could buy used clothes on eBay. And a lot of them, when they say used, they're not they're not even used. They still have the tags on them. People bought them and they never cut the tags off. I can still go into my closet and find clothes items that I bought that I never cut the tags off because I haven't even worn them. But you can buy these things. You can go and buy somebody's clothes that they bought. Maybe they liked it in the, uh, in the dressing room. And when they brought it home, they didn't like it. They never wore it. You could buy this stuff for five, 10 cents on the dollar. Why should you go out and charge money on a department store credit card when you don't have the cash? This is nonsense to encourage people as an economic policy to buy stuff that they can't afford. You know, that's why Americans have nothing saved for retirement, because when they were younger, they spent all their money on stuff they couldn't afford. If instead they had gone without that stuff and saved their money, they would be in much better financial shape. And of course, the country would be in much better shape because we would have been able to put those savings to productive use. Instead, we weren't able to do that because the money was blown because people bought stuff that they couldn't afford. And that's what Steve Leesman wants people to do. He wants people to go out there and buy stuff that they can't afford as if that's going to help the economy, as if that's going to help the people who are accumulating all this debt. It's not. Consumer credit is a cancer. It's an economic cancer on an economy. Now, yes, I mean, there are people who want to indulge themselves and who will, you know, uh, recklessly go out and borrow money and buy stuff just because they want to have it now. But are these the people we want to emulate? How many successful people 
How many entrepreneurs who have built successful companies, you know, took on a lot of consumer credit when they they didn't do it? If they did that, they couldn't have started their businesses. How do you start a business? You need savings. Are you going to have any savings if you blow all your money buying stuff you can't afford? How many businessmen can start a business if they're loaded up with credit card debt? They can't. In fact, some people use their credit cards to start their businesses. They actually borrow money on their credit cards to pay some of their business expenses. Well, if your credit cards are already maxed out because you bought a bunch of consumer stuff you couldn't afford, well, then you don't have the leeway to do that. I mean, this is all such BS. Go out and borrow money and buy things. Buy a new car. You know, take a vacation. Borrow the money. Incredibly, this is what Steve Leesman thinks that people ought to do. And supposedly, this is CNBC. Aren't they supposed to be giving out, you know, financial advice, investment advice? And that's it? That's their advice? Go out and borrow money and buy stuff? No. How about save your money, invest your money until you can afford to buy stuff, and then go shopping? First, you build up your wealth, and then you tap into it. See, that's the way it works. You earn the money, you save the money, right? You create all this wealth, and then you spend it. You don't do it the other way. You don't spend before you have the savings. Right? You buy the stuff. It's like that old Saturday Night Live skit, right? You know, where, you know, don't buy stuff if you don't have the money. If you can't afford it, you don't buy it. If you can afford it, then you buy it. And affording it means you have the cash. You don't have to go into debt. Greg is uh, on the phone now. He's calling in from Tallahassee, Florida. Greg, you're up. Yeah, Peter, thank you. I wanted to comment on your, your last uh, monologue there about you know, consumer credit and uh, the TV discussion with Steve Leesman and company. And, and that mm-hmm. entire discussion is predicated, uh, much like our official policy, whether it's in the Eurozone or um, you know, here with the Fed and whatever else, it's predicated on utterly undefinable, meaningless language so that none of those morons could ever be accountable for what they said. They just use words like, well, you know, a reasonable amount of debt. Or, yeah, you should only do that to the degree that you can afford it. But the real problem here is a problem of language because those guys are rendering logical concepts completely meaningless by using those words in ways that are either completely undefinable or else they use them in the opposite way of their real meaning. So, for instance, you were just saying, you know, you can't afford something if you don't have money to buy it, right? Well, that makes perfect sense. That's a logical statement. Well, now these clowns just assume being able to afford something, that just means not that you have money in the bank. It just means that somebody will lend you some money, no matter what the terms, no matter how unlikely the odds of you actually repaying it. But if somebody will lend you the money then you can afford it. It's the same reason we got into this whole, uh, yeah. you know, um, budget battle. Yeah. And, uh, the, the, yeah, the idea... The, yeah, the idea that you can afford something just because somebody is willing to lend you the money to buy it, the fact that you have to borrow the money, maybe it, does, it means that you can't afford it. Now, you know, you could make an exception for potentially, you know, a house. I, you can argue that somebody could borrow to buy a house because a house isn't going to depreciate to zero like an article of clothing or taking a vacation. You know, you take a vacation, the vacation is worthless when you get back. Yeah, you've got some photographs, uh, but, you know, that's it. It's gone. Um, you know, or buying furniture or things that are going to lose 80, 90 percent of their value uh, shortly after you, you buy them. Because if you borrow to consume and when somebody lends you money, they do charge interest. And on credit cards, the interest is very high. So ultimately, if you borrow money to buy stuff, at the end of the day, you end up buying a lot less stuff because now you have to spend money on interest. If you simply waited until you can afford the stuff and then bought it, you could buy a lot more because you wouldn't have to be paying interest on the money that you borrowed. So ultimately, if you don't take on consumer debt, you can consume more stuff. You can buy more things if you don't go into debt than if you do. The only difference is if you go into debt, you can buy it right now. And that's all guys like Steve Meeslin care about. What can we do to artificially goose the economy right now? But if you go into debt to buy more stuff now, you're going to buy less stuff later. You're indulging your present while sacrificing your future. That is a very childish, immature thing to do. Uh, but a guy of Steve Leesman's age shouldn't be on television encouraging grown adults to behave like children.